I'm Gary Bowden, and welcome to Zara. XOME 2013 FM, home of smooth tutorials all of the time. This month, I'm going to show you how to draw neon. Here's the finished composition you'll be building this month from the tracing paper Zara document. I'm going to show you how to make the neon chili pepper, and then you'll have the technique for finishing the drawing. See here that even close up, the finished drawing is rich, attractive, and evokes a certain photorealism. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the Downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to load it in Zara. In the tracing paper document, I've deliberately left an imported bitmap unlocked, and this is because on your own, what you want to do as a first step to tracing is to right click and then choose Lock Photo. Now I'm going to choose the Shape tool as a drawing tool, and I'm going to draw around the center line of this pepper. And I'm going to make it curve and smooth in terms of the attributes, and I've given it a contrasting light magenta color. I'm going to change that color later. As you can see, the shape tool uh, can be used to click on points of inflection, points of sudden change around the outline of uh, the underlying document. And I'm going to uh, go back over here, start the line again, and complete the center line drawing. Now that I've got that done, once you've completed drawing the center line of the chili pepper shape, you'll want to click individual control points with the shape tool to reveal the control handles and move certain control points so that the line shape more closely adheres to the underlying bitmap. Once you're happy with the line shape, I want you to shift click on a light green on the color line to change the color of this outline. Switch to the selector tool and with this line selected, press Ctrl K to copy it. Okay, with the copy selected, on the standard bar, go up to the outline width drop down and choose 8 pixels. And then shift click on a dark green on the color line to make this clone darker. Press Ctrl Shift B to put it behind the original. Select the original and make it a little thinner, um, 0.5 pixels is good. And with this original selected, hold shift on the keyboard and then you use your up keyboard key and your left keyboard key, one stroke each, to move the original up and left one pixel. And this will create a more interesting blend. Now with the thin light line selected, hold shift and select the dark green line. Go get the blend tool and drag from the dark thick line to the light thin one and boom, you got a nice piece of neon now. Now, moving ahead, let's address these, uh, these will be red crow feet designs. Now I'm using the pen tool and I set it to a light 0.5 width line and I'm clicking single points to create this first shape. Hit escape to deselect them and start another straight line. Okay, I've done one, this may be hard to see, but I'm clicking straight, lines and when I need to start another line I hit escape so here we go click a point click a point click a point I've got half the design done hit escape and then click two points and now I'm on to the fourth crow foot design here and uh, once I've got that done what I want you to do is uh, select the first one hold shift and select the third a marquee selecting while holding shift now I want you to choose Arrange, Join Shapes, and even though these shapes are distinctly apart, they will become one shape. Now I want you to press Ctrl K, and once you have a duplicate above that, let's shift click and make it a darker red color. Choose 8 pixels as the width, press Ctrl Shift B to put it behind the original thin line. Now I want you to select the thin line and the thick line shape. Once we have these both selected, drag from the dark thick line to the light thin one 
and we have another handsome example of a neon shape. Moving ahead, I want you to select both the uh, red and the green pieces of neon, press Control C, and then press Control N to make a new document, and press Control V. Now that we have this copy here, and choose Arrange, Convert, Line to Shape, the result is going to be a black closed shape. I want you to do the same thing with the red crow's feet. We have two shapes now, and we are building this in a separate document just to keep the original one here clean. Press Control C, go back to the original document, Control V, and here we have these two shapes. I want you to, with the selector tool, move them over the original. Now let's select the pepper shape and uh, give it a green color. We're not really going to use the shape. We're going to use the uh, shadow effect on the shape. So we'll make it 99 transparent. Click the shadow tool, click the wall shadow, and then click the glow. What I've done here is I've created a glow that isn't default red, but black. We don't want red, we want green. So by clicking the wall shadow first, and then the glow, we have a black glow, which is unusual, but you're going to change that. With the shadow tool, with the shadow selected, I want you to click on a green, and immediately that's looking much better. So what I want you to do now is uh, take the selector tool, and uh, what we're going to do is put a black rectangle behind this neon, so we can better evaluate what it's going to look like in the fin finished composition. Drag a rectangle, make it black with a selector tool, press Control shift b a couple of times until we have both the glow object and the uh, neon object selected. And um, what we do is we um, sort of analyze how this glow is looking. Now, I don't think it's intense enough. So what we do is we uh, select this 99% transparent glow object. And then with the uh, shadow tool and this object selected, uh, let's manipulate the blur and the transparency to increase it a little bit. The other thing that you can do is click drag directly on the shadow object as I'm doing here. When your cursor looks like a uh, the shadow cursor, you can increase it or decrease it by dragging away from it. Press Control Shift B with the uh, glow object selected to put it behind the neon. Now that looks pretty good, except I think the uh, neon object itself could be a little lighter if you feel that way. Click on a lighter green or use the color editor to mix it up. Now let's do the crow's feet. I want you to click on a uh, light red color, make it 99% transparent as we did with the pepper. And then with the uh, shadow tool, uh, click wall shadow to get the black color, click glow. So that is a black glow now. And uh, what you do is you click the shadow object itself and let's click on an acid red and make it less transparent. And I'm going to ask you to blur it a little bit. And what we might want to do is click drag on the shadow itself to increase its size. And when you think you're done with the pepper, I want you to uh, go to the South of the Border document and just take a look, toggle between documents, and see how uh, your pepper stacks up to the one in the original illustration. Now, eventually, you're going to want to finish your illustration. You can either do it the hard way by using the same pepper techniques, or you can copy this hat and the green objects from the South of the Border document. You select them, press Control C, and then toggle back to your document and press Control V. Move it into place. You might want to press Control Shift B to put the hat behind the pepper, but in front of the black rectangle. With a selector tool, increase the size of the rectangle. Now I'm going to show you something neat. Um, if you wanted to animate this neon, make it go on and off, I've Control clicked the green object inside the hat. That's part of a blend. And what you can do is make the uh, lightest green object darker and lighter in two different frames in animation, and you'll have an animated sign. I'm going to show you something a little different now with the uh, south of the border text. I want to thank Nick Curtis for offering this for free. 
Uh, so if you go to the Zarazone webpage where you got the download, you also uh, have a link to next font. So I'm going to drag the uh, rectangle up so that the south of the border, uh, this is text converted to curves. Um, I'm going to go to the, uh, I want you to go to the page and layout and find the uh, guides layer. And if you wanted to draw this by hand, you'd use the guides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the uh, text that was on the guides layer into this document. Now it's a, a series of black shapes. I converted my text to uh, shapes. Give it a light color. Now with the contour tool and the south of the border shape selected, I want you to drag outward and this is going to be a second way to show you how to do a, uh, a neon glow. Uh, change the contour steps to one step, press Control shift s to make this two separate objects, they're grouped, press Control u to ungroup. And now what I want you to do is to select the inner shape, the south of the border shape, I believe it's in three pieces, and make the text black. This is an artistic effect. Uh, this uh, black on black with uh, the glow that you're going to do. So once you have south of the border turned into black, I want you to select what used to be the outer contour shape, give it a nice warm gold color, and then on the info bar, use the feather control. Drag to the right until you have just a little bit of glow around south of the border. And this is how I originally created the composition. Have fun with this neon stuff, and I'll see you next time on...